Welcome to the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax referral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy, and using a proven tax referral strategy, such as the Deferred Sales Trust, is the best way for you to grow your wealth. Hey, I'm your host, Brett Swartz. In each episode, I am joined by some of the best real estate, financial, uh, wealth, and leadership minds in the world, where they share their ideas, deal stories, and inspiration, so together we can make complex tax referral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. As a part of uh, part of you know growing your wealth is first growing yourself and learning how to become everything you were created to be. I believe we'll all be given certain gifts in this life, and those gifts have been given to us to be able to bless others. So I have the uh, pleasure to uh, welcome to uh, the show uh, Kuda Abiza. Hey Kuda, how you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Hey, better than I deserve, and I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm going to have you give us a little bit about your background in current focus, and then we're going to dive into your new book, uh, book Spear Method, Five Simple Steps to Success and Fulfillment. So um, give our listeners just a, a brief part about your story and your current focus. Yeah, sure. Um, so <clears throat> I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started my very first business when I was nine years old in Harare, Zimbabwe, where I was born. And uh, it's actually an interesting story how I started. Um, it was a hot summer day and I went to my mom asking for some ice cream money. And uh, she said to me, no, you were naughty this morning so you're not gonna have an ice cream. So it bothered me that how could one person dictate my ice cream destiny? So uh, you know, I looked over and I saw that my neighbor's windows were dirty so I picked up a bucket, my mother's cleaning supplies, ran over to my neighbor's house, and I pitched her on, you know, hey, I'll clean your windows, though your house will be the, you know, cleanest in the neighborhood. And I don't know if it was pity or she actually uh, bought into the sales pitch. She, she said, yeah. So, you know, three hours later, I earned my first $5 in business. So that's how I started my first business, spent the whole summer uh, you know, going door by door and and doing the, 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 the sales and ended up working with two of my buddies who were cleaning the windows and I was doing the sales. That's how I started my first business. And uh, fast forward to when I came to the US when I was in Boca Raton, Florida, studying at Lynn University, I started my second business in a dorm room, which was a social conscious uh, clothing line where for you know, the t-shirts that we would sell, we would donate 20% of our profits to educate children in Africa. Because as I was growing up in Zimbabwe, I had witnessed firsthand um, what poverty could do. And public education is not free in Africa. So if your parents didn't have the money or if you were an orphan, you were not getting uh, an education. So that business ended up uh, empowering and transforming hundreds of children's lives through scholarship grants across Africa, in Ghana, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and uh, South Africa. And when I graduated college, I was fortunate enough to be hired by a fairly large Fortune 500 company, multi-billion dollar company, um, where I was working in the uh, innovation and uh, e-commerce uh, setup. So my mandate was to launch new businesses. So I had finished business school and they basically created this team where we had to identify entrepreneurial opportunities, create a business plan for, for how we're gonna attack this space and actually launch them. So one of the businesses I launched was uh, a meal delivery business called Crockpot Cuisine. And Crockpot was one of the brands that this company had. And you know everybody knows Crockpot. Um, and, and unlike Keurig at the time, where Keurig, you would buy the coffee maker, and also you'd buy the K-Cups, Crock-Pot didn't have a model where, you know, when you buy the hardware, you'd also be able to buy the meals. So I worked on developing that entire business. Um, it was a line of frozen meals. It became super successful. We ended up having a strategic alliance with Omaha Steaks. Um, so, so that was kind of like um, me cutting my teeth in, in corporate America and creating an idea from a napkin and, and turning it into a multi-million dollar business. Um, I then went on to also run uh, one of our e-commerce divisions, which was a fairly large business, close to $80 million in annualized revenue, selling on Amazon, on our own direct-to-consumer properties, and also on uh, various retail.com uh, websites like walmart.com, target.com, and so forth. 
And then to finally partnering um, with uh, Tony Robbins and Michael Loeb in informing Non Believable, which is the, the company that I run now, which is a, a mission-based cookie company um, where for every box of cookies that um, we sell, we give out meals uh, to people in need. There's a huge hunger crisis in America, which has actually grown now more than ever, given what's happened with COVID. So, you know, we are a for purpose business where we're using a portion of our profits to help uh, feed those in need. Amazing. Wow. What a story. And uh, I think uh, maybe your book covers a lot of that part of the story. Maybe it doesn't. But if it hasn't, uh, I'd love to read that, that full story because that is uh, truly remarkable and transformational for your country and for uh, your your, um, your story is just uh, really inspiring. So before we dive into uh, some of those details on how you grew yourself and how your leadership and how your entrepreneurial journey has, has gone, I want to take one other step back and, and to focus on on what, you know, maybe with that one or two gifts that you believe you were given, right? What Besides maybe the drive and besides uh, maybe the the uh, creativity, what would you say is that one or two gifts that you believe you were given and how does that help how you, how you help and bless others today? So I think the first gift is curiosity. Um, I've always been curious, uh, you know. So when I was 10 years old, I was curious um, why kids my age weren't going to school. Because whenever I would be walking, going to school, I'd see a group of kids who weren't um, going to school. So one day I decided to go over to the house and just hang around and play with them. But really I wanted to understand, you know, why were they being homeschooled or whatever. So that was the day I, I learned that they were not going to school because they didn't have any money to pay for education. So like I, I had mentioned earlier, public education in, in, in a lot of the developing countries is not free. So in, in, in that case, I started wondering why, number one, the government, uh, you know, business people, churches and whatnot, weren't really stepping in and helping these children. And it also became the day that I decided that I wanted to leave uh, Zimbabwe, make something of myself, and then use that as a platform to make a difference. So, so that was really the genesis of me becoming a social entrepreneur, because I knew that I had to be an entrepreneur in order for me to create the resources that I would then use to drive impact. So I think that's the first thing. Um, it is uh, curiosity and you know, it still serves me today as I learn new skills and I'm curious about how things work and it's really helped me in, in my entrepreneurial journey. And I think the, the other gift I, I would say is um, the ability to network, um, you know, um, I'm an introvert, but people wouldn't really know that. So I think I'm a functioning extrovert, I guess, or functioning introvert. I don't know how to describe it, but what I've learned fairly quickly and what we say in Africa is that, you know, it takes a village, right? For, for you to, to, to do anything, to raise a child, to build a business and whatnot. So fairly early on, I, I realized that I needed to be able to um, you know, talk to anyone and build and establish connections with, with people because whatever big, hairy, audacious goal that I might have, I, by myself, with my gifts and my talents uh, and whatnot, I, I am not able to do it. We are connected all together. We need all of our unique gifts. So being uh, able to network and speak to people from diverse backgrounds and cultures and, and to be able to influence them um, in believing in what, what your goal is and what your belief is, 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 is you know, a superpower. Not, not saying that to me it's a superpower, but I think for anybody who embraces that, it is indeed a superpower because anything meaningful in life, um, you have to have other people join you in that. Um, so, so I think those are two gifts that I feel highly blessed to have and they've been able to serve me really, really well uh, so far in my life. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more and really well said. So curiosity, uh, as well as being able to connect with others and then the ability to network, right, and bring those all together. And then, and then to have a vision and, and not only just bring it together, but then take action, right, which maybe leads into a little bit of, of, uh, of the book, which I want to dive into right now, which is The Spear Method. Right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 know, I know nothing about the book, but I imagine there's got to be something you're targeting the spear towards, right? And you've got to have 
some, some, uh, the five simple steps to success and fulfillment. So let's, let's dive into the book and some of these simple steps to, um, and you can maybe touch on one or two that uh, you feel are most needed, especially given what's going on right now in the world, right? In the United States, in this COVID environment, um, in, this, in what can be kind of a discouraging, challenging world. Um, give us a couple of those steps to, to encourage us today. Yeah, so the spear, if you think about it, it, it is a tool that literally saved mankind. Because if you think about primitive or like back in the day, like societies, the spear was the tool that they actually used to number one, survive, right? You know, you have a saber tooth tiger or whatever coming at you, you'd rely on a spear to save your life. But also number two, to thrive, right? You go hunting, you need to eat, um, you need to, to, to feed your family. Um, you know, back in the days without guns, you then use your spear to, 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 to hunt. So it's been a very essential tool um, in, in mankind, right? From history, even up until now. Um, but what I like about the spear is twofold. It's very, very simple, right? It's a very simple tool. It's not complicated, right? Um, but it's effective. Um, because once you know how to use it, you can, you know, do, do a lot of great things with it. And the SPEAR method, what I talk about in my book, it's actually an acronym that stands for five things. So you were talking about you want to hit a target, right? Um, and your SPEAR is your tool. Well, in life, you need to understand your why, right? What's your purpose? So the very first step in the SPEAR method is seek your purpose, seek your why. Because if you're living life and you don't know your destination, it's like you get into your car and you just say like, oh, I'm just gonna drive and you don't know where you're gonna go. So you're just driving aimlessly, right? Um, so, you know, you need to have clarity in understanding what's your purpose? How can you serve the world with your unique gifts? What's your why? Because once you have clarity around that, you can then get into the next phase, which is P, which is plan. So now you can really start planning in, as to how you're gonna achieve that purpose um, because you know where you're going. So imagine if you were to board a flight and you talk to the pilot and the pilot goes like, oh yeah, oh, we don't know how we're gonna get to destination A. H how comfortable or confident would you feel, right? They will just say like, oh, we're just gonna wing it we'll just figure it out once we go. No, every flight needs a flight plan. So it's super important for you once you've taken the time to really understand what's your purpose, what's your why, to also uh, take the time in planning. But one thing I do want to state is that planning is not an event where you just sit down and you plan once and you're done. It's not static. It's a dynamic process that you have to continuously do over time as you're learning new things and, and, and going through certain experiences, you know, you, you tweak your plan over time. And it's, it's super important for, for, for people to understand that because people might think like, okay, you create your plan and then you shelve it somewhere. No, you have to look at it every day. And as if you're learning new things, you, 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 it constantly evolves. Um, so that's the second phase. And then the third phase, which many people might actually argue, myself included, to be the most important is E, which is execute, right? If you find out your why, right, you spend, you know, time really thinking through, like, what's my why? And you spend the time to plan and don't execute, then what's the point, right? Um, I actually go, go further to say there are three important days in life. The day you are born, the day you find out why you're born, right? Where you find out your purpose. And then each day you work on, you take action, right? On your why. Because every day now becomes super important because if you are executing and progressing on your why, the faster you're gonna get there. Um, and, and that is what will actually then give you both success and fulfillment. Um, which leads me to the next one, which is A, which is achieve. And this one is quite interesting because don't think of achievement as kind of like you arrive at a point and then that's it. It's like breathing, right? In order for you to survive, you have to constantly breathe. You can't survive over a breath you took five minutes ago, right? 
you need to breathe all the time. So it's the same with same thing with achieve is that you need to be achieving and hitting certain milestones along the way every single day. So remember what I said, the three most important days are the day you're born, the day you find out why, and each day you act on your why. So each day you're acting on your why is each day you are achieving and hitting certain milestones to, to, towards your, your purpose. So it's super important for you to, to be taking action every single day um, and stepping outside of your comfort zone. Because you find that a lot of the things that um, we do in life um, that are aligned with our purpose and our why will require you to step outside of your comfort zone. In fact, yesterday, TEDx published my TED uh, talk around the importance of stepping outside of your comfort zone. So I can send you the link and maybe you can drop it in if people want to watch it. And then the last one is repeat, right? What you want to do is you want to make sure that you repeat this process over and over again, because you, by repetition, that's how you're going to achieve that goal that you want to achieve. So similar to like what I was talking about breathing, right? You, you have to do it all the time. It's, it's, it's also that loop. You, you, you plan, you execute, you make some sort of achievement, and then you go back and, and, and you repeat it. So that's what the SPEAR method is all about. And um, by doing that, especially if you're in alignment with your why and you're executing, um, you're going to achieve success, but more importantly, you're going to achieve fulfillment. And it was really important for us, for me rather, to articulate uh, the difference between success and fulfillment because a lot of people chase success and then they forget that you need to also be fulfilled. So, so that's why I wrote the book. Well, amazing. And I want to, uh, I want to read the book and I want to just kind of try to encapsulate what you just said there a little bit here. So uh, spear method, right? First mm -hmm. of all, it's, um, it's simple and effective, right? It's simple and effective. And it's when it's, Historically speaking, it's one of the best ways for man's survival and for man's, uh, you know, man, woman's, mankind's um, uh, tools, right? And so you need something that's simple and effective. First one, uh, is S, seek your purpose or seek your why. Uh, number mm -hmm. two is plan, uh, not an event. Uh, it's not static. It's dynamic. You're, you're planning and constantly planning. Uh, e is execute. You're, you're, you're executing on um on your plan and you're also executing on your why right once you figure out what your why is you're executing on that and then it's achieving um achieving every day building some momentum right i think where tony says where energy flows or where, where focus goes energy flows yep. so i think if you're achieving and build momentum in those action steps you're, you're more likely to repeat which leads into the last one right and doing these things all over again right because i think it's, it's important because if you're not repeating you might get stuck in one of these or it might start with the enthusiasm with the why, right? And then do this on the planning and you get into the execute phase and, you know, you get so caught up in, in all of this, the day to day and the stresses of life that if you're not stopping to remind yourself of, of not only the, the key, I guess, performance indicators, or the key performance actions you be taking every day and you're not going back to your why, right? You can get kind of burnt out. Maybe that's part of the thought when you're talking about success versus fulfillment. So maybe bring that, bring that idea together of, how do you maintain uh, or how do you encourage a state of fulfillment versus a state of just success? Yeah, so it, it really starts with the very first step, right? Which is seeking your why and your purpose. Because there's so many ways for you to be successful, right? You could, and, and the definition of success, right? Um, from from kind of like an, an, a more average and common, common point of view is, you know, materialistic stuff, right? Having the bands and the Porsches, the big house, the million dollars and whatnot. Um, so that's what a lot of people see and view success is um, keeping up with the Joneses. So if, if, if you just focus on that, there's so many ways to make money and some of those ways don't fulfill you. So I'll give you an example um, using myself. Um, I, I spoke about how I was in corporate America, right? And I was launching these businesses, building multi-million dollar businesses, um, generating tremendous amount of money in, in this Fortune 500 uh, environment. And I was well compensated. I came to America with $40 in my pocket. That's all my parents could give me. 
So to have found myself at a place where I'm running an $80 million e-commerce division, um, I'm earning, you know, this wonderful salary, I, you know, I had it all, um, I was successful, right? But I was not fulfilled because what I wanted to do, what my purpose is, is to remember, make something of myself and then use that to make an impact. So yes, I was successful from a corporate perspective, but I wasn't um, giving back and touching lives the way I wanted to. So when the opportunity for Nonbelievable came about, it was a no brainer for me to quit, you know, the, the comforts of a Fortune 500 company, the nice, you know, lucrative salary and, and all of that to go into a startup and build a brand from scratch um, that, you know, for me was going to give me fulfillment because what gives me fulfillment is changing other people's lives. Yes, I want to be successful. I want Nonbelievable to, to be the best cookie brand out there. But while I'm doing that, I want to make sure that I'm fulfilled and I wake up every day in the morning, look myself in the mirror and say like, hey, I'm going out there and I'm chasing success, but I'm also being fulfilled because we're feeding a lot of people. So from that context, that's how you marry the two because um, I get super energized by driving growth and building, you know, and creating value, right? But I'm also fulfilled as I'm giving back and making a difference in other people's lives. And I was able to, to, to then do that. Um, and I felt that there were so many people like me, right, who don't take the time to really think, hey, what gives me fulfillment, right? And it doesn't mean that you have to do what I did, which is quit your job, but maybe you can literally just start volunteering two hours a week um, at the Y or at Habitat for Humanity or whatever it is that gives you fulfillment. So you just wanna make sure that that bucket of your life, you're finding uh, things that fill it and you're putting it in your plan to make sure that as you're you know, executing every single day, that part of your life is is addressed as well beautiful yeah i think of maybe an equation here your why plus your purpose plus impact equals fulfillment right and your why plus purpose plus impact equals fulfillment and uh and likewise um i've had an opportunity to serve for about six years and i mentor and coach and lead a bible study for some younger guys that are um you know kind of in their early early 20s right and I like to say, I'm just a couple steps ahead of you guys, right, in my career and my family. And if I can just impart some wisdom and encourage you and help in your leadership growth, right, and, and, um, and growing closer, closer to God and, and following him the best you can, then that, to me, brings a lot of fulfillment, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I, had, I was fortunate to have that same thing done for me, for folks who were a few steps ahead of me in life. I was the young 25-year-old walking in when there was guys in their 40s and their 50s and in their 60s. And they, they built into me, and, um, and so now the chance to be able to give back is, uh, is definitely fulfilling. So uh, talk about some of the things that you are passionate about, right? I, I love the idea of social entrepreneurship, right, and the ability to go back. So what is the cause maybe that you're laser focused on right now, um, and uh, what does that look like, and, and, and where can folks learn more about that? So it's actually two causes um, that I'm focused on right now. The first one, obviously, is hunger. There's a huge hunger crisis in America. And, you know, coming from Zimbabwe, I thought it was for us, right? For people in mm. Africa and whatnot. And um, when you come to America, you think, you know, it's one of the wealthiest nations, if not the wealthiest nation in the world, it probably doesn't happen here. But when you really start looking into the facts and the figures, you actually realize that it's actually probably a much bigger issue. Uh, but if it's not happening in your backyard, you know, people don't see it, they don't, think about it, it's not top of mind. And when, when we started looking into the numbers, we started learning that it's actually a big issue. So I'll give you some stats. Pre-COVID, um, Feeding America was reporting that, you know, more than 37 million Americans struggled with hunger. They were food insecure. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Now, think about that number for a minute. 37 million, that's more than the population of Canada. So there are more hungry people in America than there are people in Canada. Now think about that for a minute, right? And Feeding America has recently released projections 
saying that because of COVID and the impact of COVID, people being furloughed, kids not going to school where they were getting meals, right? Um, that number has gone up to 54 million uh, Americans are food insecure. And I've had the opportunity to volunteer at um, you know, some of our soup kitchens, some of our partners, and to really sit down and talk to some of the guests that come to the soup kitchen. And what I've realized is that it can happen to anyone. I was talking to a gentleman, he used to work on Wall Street. He was a VP for one of the top uh, financial institutions. Um, and a series of unfortunate events happened and now he's homeless and he, he, he sleeps in the subway and he has to go to a soup kitchen to eat. But he had a high rise in New York City, was on a six uh, figure salary. On a, in a good year, his bonus would be seven figures sometimes. But he found out that his wife was having an affair uh, that made him get on this whole, uh, you know, drug abuse, uh, you know, and, and he became alcoholic. He got fired. And because now he was already addicted, he couldn't get hired again. And with the mortgage payments and all this stuff and the divorce, lost everything, and now he's on the street. It can happen to anyone. And um, what I like about some of the organizations that we work with is that not only do they help uh, the guests um, with the meals, they also even have programs in place to try to help you get back on your feet and you know get, get your life together. So that is real impact when you can work on creating a business that not only feeds people so that they survive, but can also get the help that they need to put their life back on track and you know have them become contributing members of society, that's impact. The second um, cause that I'm really passionate about, and I'll always be passionate about it, is education. Like I said, you know, when I was growing up in Zimbabwe, you know, I was able to see um, people who didn't get an education, but I myself was this close from not getting an education. And what had happened was that um, I wanted to come to America, but I came from a lower middle class family in Zimbabwe. There was no way that my parents would have afforded uh, an American college tuition. So the only way I could come to America was through scholarship. And um, it took me two years after I had finished high school to when I finally got a scholarship to come to America. So during that two year period, I got to experience what it felt like not to be able to have access to education. And I also know that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world, quoting Nelson Mandela. So it's, it's super important um, for, for, for people to, to, to be educated. And the United Nations says that about 66 million uh, children uh, of primary school age are not enrolled in school. And you look into the world and how technology and all these things are impacting the world and what the world will look like in the next 10 to 15 years, you need uh, you know, people who are educated, you know, coding and all these different things to, to really even just participate, right? No, not even, let, we're not even talking about jobs and things like that. Just to participate um, and live, you, 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 you need to, to, to be savvy. So that's the second cause that I'm, I'm really passionate about. And my wife and I, we have a company called This Is My Era, where we have 90-day uh, planners, uh, as well as an online academy. And for every 90-day planner that we sell, we donate a stationary kit through a partnership with uh, a few organizations, including World Vision, which is one of the biggest nonprofit and humanitarian organizations in the world um, to, to children in developing countries, primarily in Africa. Beautiful. Wow, so much there. I love the passion for education and then also hunger. And then this is my era. Where, where can they find out about those planners? This is my era.com. Perfect. So if you just go to thisismyera.com, mm -hmm. you can get yourself a 90 day planner. And for every planner that you sell, you are helping a child in need to get um, quality education. Love it, love it, love it. Are you ready for the lightning round? Sure, let's do it. All right, so knowing what you know now, uh, if you could go back to your 25-year-old self, what's the one golden nugget that you would make sure that you would do? Dream big.
I, you know, dreams are kind of like what fuel action, right? So if you're dreaming to this level, dream to this level, because then if you miss, you, 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 you end uh, a little bit higher. And that was the first piece of advice uh, that I was given with the first billionaire I was able to meet. Uh, his name is Jeff Hoffman. He's one of the guys behind Priceline.com. Um, and if you go to an airport and you actually see a, a kiosk for self-check-in, he was the guy who invented it. And when I met him at a conference and I was talking to him and I asked him like, hey, what piece of advice would you give me? He was like, Kuda, just dream big. Um, so, so that would be the advice that I would give myself. Beautiful. Love that. What is the one book you've recommended or gifted the most in the past year? Well, gifted the most, obviously, it's my book. <laughs> spear method, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, the spear method. But um, when it comes to um, just, you know, any other book, it'll be this one. So investing in real estate, right? So it's investing in real estate with no money down. Um, real estate is, for me, um, the fastest path to wealth. And, you know, my father, you know, would always teach me all these things when I was young. And he would always say like, hey, you, when you're young, quickly figure out a way to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. And um, for, for me, it's been kind of like a passion to, to, to figure out how to get rental properties and build a portfolio for my wife and I. And we're on that path right now. Um, and so, so I would really tell people, look into, in, into real estate. So th this is just one book. There's another book by Chris Crone, um, another real estate um, guru, if you'd like to say, um, would, would, those would be my recommendations. Beautiful. Give me a mobile or digital resource you recommend for your business. A mobile or digital resource I recommend for my business. Um, so right now it would definitely be Shopify because obviously we, we, we sell online, both of my businesses, non-believable, and this is my era, uh, you know, direct to consumer. So the Shopify app and the Shopify platform is literally the engine for, for our business. Beautiful. Favorite leadership quote or theme that you strive to live by? Favorite leadership quote or theme that I strive to live by? Um, I would say from a leadership perspective, it's a quote by a, a guy called Strive Masiwa. And Strive Masiwa, uh, is a, he's a Zimbabwean entrepreneur. He's based in London and he created a telecommunications uh, company. And one of the things he always uh, talks about is that identify a need, right? A big need and figure out how to solve it, um, especially if you're gonna be an entrepreneur. Um, so, so for me, I always try to identify that need and figure out how could I solve it? Um, you know, so, so from a leadership perspective, that's what I would say. I love that and a uh, little story close to home here. So I saw uh, Strive uh, speak at, at the Global Leadership Conference, I think about three years ago. Um, and it's actually about two and a half years ago to be exact, because my, uh, my wife and I, we have, we have, uh, five kids and the first four were, are daughters and we were considering what to name our son. And I saw him speak and, uh, was inspired. And so we named him after, uh, Strive. And so his name is Strive and, uh, he's now, uh, he just turned two, uh, about two months ago. And, um, that's, uh, it's a big part of our, um, our um, inspiration was from him. And that's, that's amazing that uh, you connected those two. That's really cool. Um, what are you curious about right now? Um, I'm curious about how I could achieve my goals uh, quicker. So I'm, I'm challenging myself to say like, okay, I have these, you know, five, 10 year goals. How can I get them done in a year, in six months? You know, so, so for me, it's really thinking about how can I accelerate um, you know, achieving these goals, because the sooner I get there, the sooner I can set new ones. And, and, you know, the, 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 the process continues. So I'm, I'm really looking into hacks. Um, so from a health perspective, um, you know, one of the hacks I just learned about is a program called Osseo Strong, which really focuses on building your bone density, because what a lot of people don't realize is that once you hit 30, you know, your bone density actually starts decreasing. 
So you need to be doing uh, exercises and things that actually help with your bone density because the stronger your bone, the more muscle you can actually put on it. So that's why, as you see, as people get older, you start losing your muscle tone and your muscle mass because your foundation, your bones and your skeletal system cannot hold um, you know, the, the, the big muscles anymore. So osseo strong, you only do it once a week and it's, it's a biohack that enables you to actually trigger a lot of growth. So for me, again, it's setting those big hairy audacious goals, but figuring out how I can achieve them quickly or with the least amount of input to drive the most amount of output. Beautiful, absolutely love that. I'm check that out for sure, osteo strong. Um, how do you spell that? Just, just, so, just so make sure I have it. Yeah, it's O-S-T-E-O -E and then strong. Perfect. Beautiful. Last question, and then we'll wrap up the show. And this is my favorite question, right? After all your success, Kuda, and after your, your amazing story of showing up with $40 to the U.S. and, and, and being able to uh, work as an entrepreneur, uh, first as a, first, uh, a W-2, you know, a multi-billion dollar uh, a company and helping them build and innovate and start new, new companies, new businesses there. And then now as an entrepreneur and writing your book, how do you stay centered in your values, and how do you stay encouraged to reach for new heights? Um, it's every morning and I have a morning routine. Um, and that morning routine really sets me up for the day because for me, I just look at it on a day by day perspective, right? Win the morning, win the day. And my morning routine is like this. I, I wake up in the morning. First thing I do is I brush my teeth. Um, and I just move, right? Because you, you want to quickly get outside, get, 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 out, get off your bed as, as soon as possible, right? Um, but the first thing I do is I spend time in silence. So I'm a Christian, so I read the Bible and I pray. That's how I get started. And then after that, I go and exercise because you really want to just get the heart pumping um, quickly. Um, and then after I exercise, I drink some celery juice and um, I have a protein shake, and then I read 30 minutes a day, every single morning I read. So it could be a business book, it could be a book around leadership, something to just kind of like, you know, build that growth muscle, right? I need to learn new things, new ideas and, and so forth. And then I spend the next 30 minutes planning my day in my, this is my era 90 day planner, a, selfless, uh, a selfish uh, plug there. But I really spend the day really thinking about, you know, what am I going to do? What are the key priorities? What am I grateful for? Gratitude is super important. Um, so, you know, that's part of the routine. And then, and then after that, um, I get into it. Uh, but that morning routine just enables me to, to, to stay focused, stay centered, be thankful for the things that I've been blessed with but also spend time thinking about what are the top three things I want to achieve today and making sure that I put most of my energy and my time towards those things and completing those things first before I get into everything else. Beautiful. Very well said. I love that. Seller Juice, we'll check that out. Um, and uh, Miracle Morning, too, for those who are listening, there's a, a there's an acronym um, that uh, follows a lot of those a lot of those habits to build. Check out that book as well. With that being said, uh, Kuda, I want to I want to thank you for being on the show um, and uh, using uh, the gifts and talents you've given to make a difference in this world, make an impact. And I want to encourage you to keep doing that. And for our listeners who want to connect with you right now, what's the best place for them to find you? The best way is to go on spearmethod.com, so they can connect with me directly. They can learn about my book and everything that I'm doing. Um, they can also connect with me on Instagram, Kuda Biza, so K-U-D-A-B-I-Z-A -A, um, on Instagram. So those are the two places you can connect with me. Beautiful. Well, thank you for being on the show. And that wraps up our another show of the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast. I also want to thank our listeners for listening to another show. Um, here's the key, right? Grow yourself, grow your leadership, and then you can grow your business and grow your profits and potentially have a capital gains tax deferral event. And that's when you want to go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to learn more about how you can have freedom from the 1031 exchange and freedom when you sell your business or other highly appreciated assets, including a primary home. So we want to thank you for listening uh, to another show. Please rate, review, subscribe, and uh, go make it a great day and help some more people by using the gifts you were given to bless others. Thanks so much.